Our first uh, speaker is Professor Maciej Pilecki, who is working at the Department of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry at the Jagiellonia University uh, Medical College here in Krakow. And he will give us a talk entitled COVID-19 in the Seek of Facts. Uh, uh, welcome, Professor Pilecki, and uh, the screen is yours. Thank you very much. Um, so we'll see the moment I start the presentation. Could you see the presentation? Is it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, thank you very much for inviting me for for this meeting. And uh, uh, actually, this is not a, um, a topic of my scientific interest, but uh, the the question of uh, misinformation facts and the consequences of the misinformations on everyday physician and psychiatrist work. Uh, becomes more and more important, especially during the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemia. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, oh, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, the COVID-19 pandemia uh, is a substantial global challenge, uh, and what's I think that very, very characteristic for for for, for this um, this type of uh, of medical problems is that the decision of a single person can influence uh, life of um, big population or almost the the the, the whole population because. Uh, um, all um, pandemias would start with an, a patient zero, so the very patient that start the, um, the problem, and then you can observe how, all, very often regarding to the decision of single uh, uh, humans, uh, the, 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 the virus can, can spread or bacteria can spread. Uh, the misinformation could be a important problem then because uh, people can uh, turn to uh, look forward an ineffective remedies so that they are mislead uh, and that they are receiving the guidance that something is going to help that actually is not going to help. Uh, that some of the remedies could be uh, potentially harmful or danger, uh, that they can overact, but also that they can underact. So all these issues would be due to the misinformation and would be due to lack of uh, um, proper knowledge um, regarding the problems as the COVID uh, uh, 19 pandemia uh, is. Uh, and this seems to be a rather huge problem because um, it seems that it, it is the research about the YouTube uh, videos where 25 of them, and it, the, there were top videos about the COVID 19, uh, they had some misleading information and uh, there had been 62 million viewers worldwide. Yeah? So it shows how the lack of a proper information or the misinformation could be harmful and dangerous for the uh, population, not exactly of one country, but uh, uh, internationally. Uh, uh, the research about how what the consequences of uh, lack of a proper or uh, uh, false uh, information are gives um, three areas that we have to be aware of. First one is that people uh, that are um, under the influence of misinformation can not want to vaccinate against COVID-19. Uh, that they will not recommend other to vaccinate and um, what is uh, especially important nowadays they are not uh, willing to comply or it, 
it decreased the willingness uh, to comply with uh, some guidance measures. Uh, so these are the three areas that what we find in the research would be important due to the uh, misinformation that, that uh, people are challenged with. And this is an example of misinformation on two levels. Because first of all, uh, this is, uh, I will show you the, 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 what, what Donald Trump really said, but um, what is uh, written here is uh, cl close to his words, but there is not exactly Donald Trump willing people to, to drink Clorox. And it is always the question, uh, is this kind of the uh, of the mem uh, only a kind of a funny comment to the um, to, to his to his words, or is it the information that people can use and can misunderstand? We are not going to go through the detailed description of uh, the, what Donald Trump said on April twenty third, but. Uh, it was rather his question, that recommendation that people uh, should uh, use uh, the substances like Clorox to, um, well, to deal with the, the SARS-CoV-2 infection. But as you can see, this is the USA Google Trends that a um, few days after uh, his, uh, his talk about that issue, the, 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 the questions about the use of uh, disinfectants uh, started to rapidly increase, and there were some um, risky behaviors of um, not very not. It, it was the, the the single cases, but but it show us uh, how the misinformation can go around uh, around world, go around one country. Uh, we don't have time to to to, to speak about that, but um, when we when we uh, when we have an uh, issue of medical populism uh, due to the what politicians are doing, there are there are four areas: this is the uh, simplification of pandemic, dramatization of the crisis, in contrary uh, 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 to the simplification, forging of divisions. We we know it well also from our country uh, and what Trump did and what is uh, correlates with uh, three-thirds dimensions is invocation of uh, knowledge uh, claims uh, that uh, has some political reasons. Uh, who believes in fake news regarding the, the COVID-19 pandemic? Older citizens? Uh, people who are self-reported, uh, they, they come from minorities, uh, they have repeated exposure to fake news, uh, the feeling of deprivation, lower trust in science and scientists, uh, lower trust in journalists, lower trust in government, and uh, conservatism in political uh, beliefs. Uh, well, we, ha we have some kind of a hopeful thinking that uh, education can lead to the, um, can challenge the acceptance or uh, believing in misinformation, but it is questionable. Um, even if it is a matter of life or death, as it is in a COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, so there is an idea of inoculation against fake news, like we have a uh, medical inoculation, but there are some reasons why we can have doubt if it is really possible to do this kind of uh, fake news inoculation. Um, in, uh, in study about the agreement with aphorisms, uh, and these uh, aphorisms were uh, having uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, without the source attribution, it is quite high um, that people accept from from very difficult different group. They they accept the, the or they agree with aphorism uh, uh, if they don't know who is the author of the aphorism. But when the author of the aphorism is someone they they don't agree or they don't believe in. Uh, they don't really want, they don't really agree, 
with the aphorism and then their education has nothing to do this with that and that the um, these beliefs are quite often part of our social identity and that the social identity uh, mm, that we choose the leaders that uh, express our aggression, not that the leaders who express aggressions uh, have our uh, mm, submissive uh, behaviors. So the, uh, it was an old uh, Chinese book about, uh, and this is a, 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 a sentence from this book, is the seek from truth from facts. And the question mm -hmm. is that, uh, if uh, many uh, thousand years later, we are the seek of uh, facts, not the truth. Um, so in a situation of regression, we are, we are looking for the miracle cures. We are looking for the gifted physicians. We even sometimes think about the physicians like almost um, gods or the health workers are like, being as a as a god, something someone very, very powerful because it could reduce our anxiety. But the question is, what about the healthcare professionals and their beliefs in a false knowledge or false informations? Um, this is a mm, important issue due to the COVID nineteen pandemic because we had been challenged with many. Uh, mm, informations that they were um, giving kind of a, a opposite data and uh, that the, it, it had been in a kind of a contradictory informations in, uh, in, in the scientific journals. This is an example uh, on March 14, French health minister Olivier Varane tweeted that uh, talking anti-inflammatory drugs, for instance, ibuprofen, uh, could be risky for the patients uh, having the COVID-9 infection. Uh, and in, within 24 hours, over 43,000 people retweet this advice. Uh, it was also an opinion from the World Health Organization um, leader, one of the leaders, Christian Lidimer, about that. In 24 hours, um, uh, the authorities recognized that it seems to be not exactly true information, uh, that it is based only at the a single letter published online in the Lancet on March 11, uh, not giving any research data, but rather the opinion of the authors about the reaction between the uh, ibuprofen uh, and the uh, uh, increased expression of AC2 uh, and facilitation of COVID-19 infection. And here you have the Google waves in France, then in Poland, and probably being uh, kind of a master in, uh, in uh, in, in uh, collecting or taking this data and changing this data into the graphic, uh, um, into the graphic um, expression that we, we can create the wave, the Google wave to hold the world regarding the question, uh, uh, coronavirus ibuprofen, uh, uh, and we can see how this information can go all around uh, the world. Uh, so a little bit about my department um, and the uh, fake news issue that we deal with and the ways that we decided to, um, uh, to, 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 to challenge this problem that, that in, uh, at the beginning of the, uh, at the beginning of the um first wave of um, pandemia we uh, were transferred into a covid-19 unit for the psychiatric patients and one of very important changes that we made into our functioning was that we started to have the team 
that was collecting, updating research-based knowledge and guidelines about the COVID-19. And important part of uh, these uh, reports, this is in Polish because I'm not going to go to details be, uh, with that. It is all what kind of example of, of work of, of uh, our colleagues, uh, Dr. Marcin uh, Siwek and, and team, that the important part of, of that uh, um, reports were uh, informations uh, about uh, data that we can trust, yeah? the information that we, we can trust. And uh, for us, it was something very important that there was someone who was a group of people who were searching uh, finding an exact sources, finding the information that we can rely on, and that it can reduce the level of, of our tension uh, or regarding, for instance, our fear that we are going to die and uh, uh, how risky is to work with the COVID-19 patients. Uh, um, um, we, we, we had uh, nine reports uh, that uh, had been uh, um, um, made on a weekly basis, changing also the information that had been in a prior reports, updating them and updating uh, our knowledge. So, uh, so what have you done to fight the false news? And I decided to end my presentation with uh, uh, my personal fight and as you know uh, uh, usually usually when we have the um, conference presentation about the drugs it is a uh, conflict of interest disclosure and what I decided to do was to do the risk of misinformation disclosure in this um, presentation um, and for, for, first of all, I'm not sure if on slide three information is taken from Pennycock paper or Rosenbeck paper. I miss it at the very beginning and well, then I, I base off my memory, not uh, double check in the internet. Secondly, the information about the book of Chan was taken from Wikipedia. Um, and the translation of the title of my presentation into English and Chinese was done by the Google Translator. And what makes me a little bit afraid about that is that I haven't found um, a similar title, title in the internet. So it means that it is probably brilliant and this is something that no one else think to do, or it is not very uh, British English. So thank you very much.